Peace, peace, peace. Peace, family. Dr. Ross Dill back here again. Another episode of Purpose and Practice. Um, this is the third day of our educator spotlight where we're saluting all those educators out there who are making positive impacts in the lives of our children. Uh, teachers, teachers and educators are so important in the lives of our children. And there's so many walks of life, you know, that are impacted by brilliant educators. Today, you know, when you talk about purpose and practice, you, you're talking about some, some people who are about their craft, right? People who are about their work, people who, who are putting in work and putting in the hours and perfecting what they do. The brother that I have on today is, is just that. You know, I, I met this brother over 10 years ago professionally. We, we work, we're colleagues uh, in the same building. I was in the building already as a school administrator. He came on board as a teacher. And, you know, when I tell you, like, we connected, like, right from the gate, it was, it was an automatic connection. One, he's an English teacher. I'm an English teacher at heart, forever will be, um, you know, and, and then we, we shared a lot of the same, you know, influences and, and, and the things that, that we were passionate about were, were very similar. So we, we had a great connection, man. So when, when I started thinking about doing this educational tour, so to speak, I was like, I got to get the brother Kim Morrison on. I got to get Mr. Morrison on. So I reached out and... The brother was like, I'm there, you know, so welcome to the show. Uh, Ken, Mr. Morrison, how you feeling, brother? I'm feeling good. I appreciate you having me. It's an honor. No doubt, man. No, no, no doubt. Like we, we just before we got on, you know, we were we were just talking about how crazy things are right now, you know, in, in our world. And, you know, I, I started off the show last night again talking about some of the unrest, um, some of the agony. I'm not even going to call it unrest, man. It's real agony, you know, out here right now, you know, especially for black and brown people, indigenous people, you know. And I know me as a black man, how this has been impacting me probably on, on a conscious level but even on a, a whole subconscious level in terms of trauma and seeing this trauma played out and played out and played out you know and, and now we got another situation with, with jacob blake and you know it, it's just the complexities right now for us you know as, as black folks is real you know um and, and i wanted to you know i, I felt it was important to to, to touch on that again, because, you know, in this space, that's what this space is all about, you know, is about community. And right now our community, our greater community is hurting. Um, so I, you know, I, I want to bring attention to that, you know, before we even get into the talks that we get into, I just think it's important to, to recognize that, you know, that, that agony and that pain that, that many of us, that many of us are in. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm going to step off of my, you know, my uh, soapbox for, for now. And, you know, what I, what I would like to do, you know, Mr. Morrison, is is go back. Like, I, I usually like to start off these things by kind of getting to know, you know, the guests and letting the folks out there know, you know, where you came from, where you were born, you know, what, what your early years were like. So if you don't mind, you know, just kind of giving us some backstory uh, to, to Mr. Morris. Right. Um, a lot of people don't know I was born in Long Branch, oddly enough. Oh! Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was born in Long Branch, right at Monmouth Medical. My children were born there as well. Um, so it was, you know, it's kind of everything came full circle when I got a job at Long Branch. It was like coming home and I've had a sense of community being there ever since. But, um, those early years, you know, uh, I've got a lot of relatives in Monmouth County, specifically in Neptune. So first three years of my life, I lived in Neptune. Uh, we live with my grandmother and my grandfather. So there's a lot of people in that house, you know, as it happens sometimes. So that sense of community was there, family. Um, and then my parents finally saved up enough money. We actually moved closer to Philadelphia. I grew up in, uh, in Willingboro. So, okay. Yeah. Um, education wise, I, um, went to private school from first grade all the way up through 12th. Um, my parents weren't satisfied with education mm -hmm. being provided by the town, you know, where I live. So they saw fit to enroll me in private school. And, and that was my experience. Wow, man. Where, where'd you, um, your, your undergrad work, where'd you go? I went to TCNJ. It's like fee. 
Go Lions. Go Lions. That's what's up. That's that's what's up, man. A great a great school, you know, for, for education, man. The the teachers that they push out, top notch. You know, year in, you know, as being someone who is in a hiring capacity and I get a chance to to visit universities and, and you know, interview um, uh, pre, pre-service teachers, totally impressed with their professors, totally impressed with, with the candidates who come through. I can't tell you how many, you know, College of New Jersey, Lions, you know, that, that I've made recommendations uh, to be hired. So definitely a shout out again, two, uh, two nights in a week, a shout out to, to, college, to college of New Jersey. So you, so you were private school, man. Yeah. I, I, I didn't realize yeah. that. I didn't realize. Well, and it sounds like it was a private school choice because, you know, your parents were looking for something more in education Absolutely. for you, mm-hmm. for you. So what was that experience like? Um, you know, the, the, the elementary school where I went was from K all the way up through eighth grade. So I went from, you know, I, I got there at first grade and went all the way up through middle school. Um, and it was in the town where I grew up. So a lot of the people that were there, I was in the same class mm. with from, okay. you know, a little kid all the way up until I graduated. Um, and it was cool. The town where I grew up is, is very diverse. So, you know, I got, got a lot of perspectives from you know, different types of people from different walks of life. So it was cool. Which is, which is important, Absolutely. man, which is, which is really important, which it kind of takes me to, you know, we're going to bounce around a little bit, but when, when you came in, um, there was a course that as an English teacher would, you know, and I grew up in Long Branch. So I was born just like you born in Long Branch. And when I was teaching, uh, my last couple of years of teaching, I, I remember going to the administration and I was like, you know, we have such a diverse com- school community here. We need to start working with our young folks in terms of preparing them to deal with the complexities, you know, of differences um, in, in, have, in, in developing the language, you know, uh, to be able to, to, to have self-awareness and then have the awareness, the greater awareness of others, you know, in terms of, you know, diversity. And I was like, what if we create a course where we begin to teach that with intention, mm-hmm. you know, like, and I have to say, you know, the school administration was behind it. Um, we, we ran a course for a few years and, I went on to administration and for my first year, the course went, went dead. Like it, it, it stopped. And then that next year you came back and, um, you revived it, bro. You know, you, you, you came back and you revived it. Can can you talk a little bit about, you know, like teaching, teaching that course, especially in this moment that we're in right now? Mm -hmm. Um, I can't even say enough good things about, you know, your motivation having created the course and the impact that it's had on the folks that were enrolled. And, you know, it was kind of like my, my grandfather always had this thing with all his grandkids where we were learning to swim. We'd go right up the street to Mr. Washington's pool. He tossed us in the deep end and you either, you either swam or you didn't. And that's kind of how it was with, with race gender. I wasn't prepared really, I think, as a novice teacher to kind of have those conversations. I don't even know if I had the language myself, but just being thrown in, you know, into the deep end, so to speak, you know, I found my way and it it was really a productive conversation for everybody involved. So I think that's important what you just said, like right now I'm working, you know, especially in in the wake of of the things that, you know, and I won't even say that are going on now because uh, many of these injustices, they've been going the the history of our country, you know, it's steeped in these injustices, Mm -hmm. you know, and, but right now I feel that there is a special type of attention and there's a magnifying glass, you know, in a sense. So, so folks are really trying to rally and, and get, you know, whether it's coursework or curriculum or positions or, you know, like to really address these these inequities and to, to really bring curriculum on board that is specifically and intentionally teaching these things. Right. Teachers are struggling with that, Ken, um, because it's difficult. They're difficult topics to Absolutely. teach. So... You you mentioned that, you know, like you just went into the to the deep end, as you put it. So tell me, like, what was that? What was the transition or, or what pre- what was it that prepared you or how did you get in the mindset for those educators who may be listening to have those difficult conversations and, and teach that difficult content? What would you say, you know, prepped you for that? 
Um, a lot of it was the conversations that we had actually, you know, going back and forth as I prepared to teach the course, as it was progressing. Um, one of the things that I still remember to this day that I, you know, hold close to me is you said, you cannot teach who you do not love, right? Mm. So love True. is the basis for empathy. Empathy is the vehicle for, for equity, essentially. So if we're going to, you know, have that people coming from diverse backgrounds, engage in dialogue and ultimately become activists become empathetic for their neighbor hmm. um you got to start from a place of love so just wow. you know looking at people as human beings understanding that we have differences and embracing that i think was important that's powerful man because you know i'm yo that that's you just blew me away with that because so many times we're so afraid to make mistakes mm -hmm and say the wrong thing, you know, um, or not use the, the proper term. And when they're conditions of love, you know, it's almost like there's this space where, no, we're going to, we're going to restore if something does, you know, go awry in, in, in the classroom, in a discussion, there's going to be this love that's going to allow us to restore, right. you know, uh, our community. And, and I, so if you're not starting with love, it's going to be difficult to, difficult to tackle these you know that that's deep, man. I, I, yo, that that's a that's a gem right there, man. And I think that that's something. And it's funny because I need to use more of that what you just said in working with teachers as we you know now progress in my role uh, in terms of getting them to understand that the importance of this work is it should be built you know uh, on love. So so now you know give give us a little bit you know that was back then man I think that's over 10 years yeah. ago easy you know <laughs> when you were doing that what, what are you up to now in terms of education? Um, these days last year they uh, in Long Branch they started the, the school of social justice uh, at the historic high school, they you know got a grant to renovate the building. They were thinking about how they could repurpose that that space, um, and social justice was the concept that they decided to go with for the new academy. So, I was honored you know to be invited to to participate. Um, I had English eleven honors, um, and then I also had race gender. You know they brought the course back again. Wow. It kind of fell by the wayside a little bit in that in intervening decade, but it was so, mm -hmm. um, and they brought the course back. So I actually this this summer. Just completed, uh, completely rewriting that curriculum from the ground up. Nice. Yeah, so I'd be happy to share it. Nice. L listen, so can you give us, well, first of all, School of Social Justice, mm -hmm. like, that's, that's dope. You know, someone just put up dope. Like, tell us a little bit more about that, because that, when I heard that, I was like, man, that made me want to go back and be like, I want to be a teacher there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, you know what it made me think of? You know what it made me think of, Ken? Is like, I don't know if you watched growing up Fame, right? Um, but I remember watching Fame. And, and, and Fame was, I forget which which uh, art school that it, it basically, you know, was, was, uh, was based on. Mm -hmm. But it was like these dancers, they were so talented and they all went to this school. And it was like a school for the arts. And I just, and it was like, when I was growing up, I was like, man, I would love to be in a school like that. You know, it was about music. It was about the arts. Um, and, and it was like in this like inner city environment. And when I heard of the school of social justice, and then when I heard that it was in, you know, the, the historic high school, I was like, yo, that's hot. So can, can you give us just a little bit, a taste of, of what it's like to be, you know, a teacher there and what the students are experiencing. Um, it's an incredible experience. I mean, to be honest, to be, like I said, to be invited to participate was, was an honor. Um, all the students that are enrolled there uh, volunteered. They did an initial mm -hmm. um, interest presentation and uh, the students that were interested, you know, applied. Um, they evaluated, you know, there's several criteria that they used to evaluate. But for the most part, if you wanted to be there, you were invited to come uh, and be there. But it was for juniors and seniors primarily. Um, and the, the, the options for the you know, curriculum, the classes that you could take run the gamut. So there's, wow. there's marketing, um, you, know, you have your environmental science, physics, uh, like I said, uh, race, gender, and ethnicity. There's a debate course nice. and law. And, and everything is you know, geared towards that idea of, of social justice and promoting equity, um, engaging students in, in activism, being active members nice. of the community. So, 
you know, it's a pleasure. And, and everybody there is very motivated, which is, you know, is, is mm. to see. That's, yo, that is fire, man. Be, so, so it's all being attacked through that lens of, of equity and yeah. social justice. Because those courses that you mentioned, listen, they all they all can be you know attacked in that way you know so that that that's really 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 hot so is this still only juniors and seniors or has it expanded or is that going to kind of be the way that it's scoped out as of this moment i think it's still only open to juniors and seniors um but i'm sure you know as there is yeah. there's more interest they'll you know work their way down to the grade levels so i i just could imagine what the discussions are like under <laughs> under that roof, man. Um, and especially now, you know, we had COVID-19, which removed you uh, from the class, removed all of us from the classroom in the spring. Yeah, um, you know, in, in like you said, a lot of what this, this work is about is about love um, and it's about community. And sometimes it's hard to do that virtually. Can, can you tell us, you know, some of the, the positive experiences you've had even through this virtual realm of instruction and then maybe even talk to a little bit of the challenges, you know, that, that you've experienced in this, this virtual world that we've been in. Yeah, it was tough, um, you know, transitioning into that building, although people were, like I said, were really motivated to be there. We had to really do the groundwork of developing discussion protocol, you know, yeah. and, and having agreements in the classroom so that we could engage in those types of difficult conversations. So, you know, we did that groundwork and for half the year and then to abruptly, you know, break up the community that we had built yeah. was tough. But um, transitioning online, you know, we ut utilized the resources that we had available. So we did a lot of uh, Zoom meetings, mm -hmm. um, you know, sharing resources back and forth as much as possible. And, and you know, the kids, to their credit, they really rose the students to their, uh, they, they rose to the occasion. Were you able to engage in conversations um, last year specifically you know when we had the the uh the murder of uh, brother floyd you know that was in the in the heart of our covid quarantine um young people were home right. um and without the brick and mortar or the the face-to-face -face ability to have these complex conversations and discussions in the virtual world were you able to engage with with young folks you know, and, and, and hear them out and, and talk through them, you know, during that situation? I was, um, Ahmaud Arbery as well. And I think a lot of it was, True. I just, you know, yeah. I, my place, like I said, I always operate from love and compassion and I always want to be somebody that's there um, so that students can share what they're going through. So a lot of the assignments that I created just gave them an opportunity to kind of almost journal write about what they were experiencing, you know, so they knew that there was somebody there that had, was willing to lend an ear and, you know, help them work through the way they were processing these events. And the other thing is I try to keep it very factual. So, you know, mm. it's really very simple to get caught up in uh, emotion, but what are the details mm. of it, you know? Um, and I think that was, that was important, keeping everything fact-based. I, I like that. I, and I think that that's really important, especially for teachers who may be uncomfortable sure. in this, you know, in, in this domain. Um, and I think it's important also to note this, that just because I am a, you know, I, I identify as a black male teacher doesn't, you know, give me this authority to speak for all of the black males, you know, and I, and I think that, you know, I'm saying that to say this is that if you are a white female teacher in the building, if you are a white male teacher in the building, if you are a Latinx teacher in the, like, th these are, these are, these are conversations and i call them now competencies mm -hmm. that we all have to come to the table you know with um and if we don't have them we have to work towards you know uh understanding this and building some knowledge a knowledge base you know on it because it can't just be about you know one one person doing all of this work and and, and i call it you know heavy lifting because it is it is complex work it can't be about that you know so do you feel that you that you all are building a community of teachers who are having who are having these kind of conversations or do you feel like it's isolated to you know to you and and, and it's not this shared responsibility um i think it's definitely a community and and there's def diverse 
uh, perspective, both in the student body and then also in the faculty as well. And the really cool thing is that, you know, we were told we had the full support of the administration and they, they kept their word. You know, it, it was not we expect you day one to come in and everybody to be comfortable discussing these things. They provided professional development for those who didn't feel nice. up to the task. Um, and they like I said, they encouraged us to have those difficult conversations in class. And one of my closest, and I think you'll remember her, Mrs. My closest um, co-workers, right? Colleagues is uh, Ms. Ms. Blyberg, now Mrs. Stone. You know, and, yes, yes. You know, we engaged in a lot of conversation yes. prior to accepting those positions, and she said that she wasn't comfortable. And I said, listen, you know, this is your voice is valuable yes. as well. You need to contribute to this conversation. Without a doubt, yes, definitely. Shout out to Ms. Blyberg. Shout out to, to Long Branch, you know, public schools for having the vision you know, and taking it there, um, not just the vision, but taking it there. And, it, you know, that that is that will always be, you know, my first love, my first community and a community, you know, that I will always love. And to see these great things happening there is really powerful, man. And I'm and I'm, ha I'm so I'm so happy that you're still there because, you know, sometimes you leave a place and, you know, you, you explore the world and you can lose you know, you, you lose contact and, and you forget, you know, you, you kind of, you, you, I, I always reminisce about it, but having someone to be able to talk to that is still there, you know, that was when I was there, it makes me feel good, you know? So I'm, I'm happy that, that you're still there with those folks and you're still doing the things that, that you're doing with, with children. You know, one, one of the things can, um, I, I said it even in the introduction, I was like, whenever I would walk past your classroom, there was always students in the class. Now, back then, teachers taught, like maybe you taught five classes a day, right? And then you had your lunch, you know. Uh, even on your lunch, you know, you were in your room, kids were in the room, and they were talking, they were engaging in conversation. You know, like, what, how did that come about, man? <laughs> I mean, it was it was organic, you know, like I, I was, you know, what, 25 years old when I started in Long Branch. So I was, you know, relatively young. Um, and I just I always thought it was important when I was in school. The teachers that had the most impact on me were the ones where you could go and hang out during lunchtime. So this is you know, this felt like it was only right that I should try and create the, the same space for my students. Mm. So they just start. And, it, and you know, and I'm going I'm to say this is that. You know, sometimes, you know, folks would, would, would say, you know, because sometimes, you know, schools are about structure. Right. Let, let's let's be honest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like, OK, kids need to be here at this time and there at that time. So if a young person is supposed to be, let's say, in a cafeteria eating lunch, but they happen to be in your room, like engaging in conversation or maybe a group of them, you know, sometimes you will walk by, you'd be like, oh, you know, because the thing is, are you where you're supposed mm -hmm. to be? You know, I, I could just remember that being, you know, like echoed. Um, but. I remember as the administrator who was working with you, I found great value in that um, because, A, it was providing a safe space for, for young people who identified that they wanted to be, you know, in this space. And I just saw it as an extension of the classroom community, you know, that, that, that you had already established. Sure. Um, did, did you ever feel like, you know... Um, Oh, is this breaking a rule or, you know, like, should, should I, you know, you guys got to go to lunch because, you know, and, I'm, and the reason why I'm saying this is because sometimes for magic to happen, you know, we, we got to kind of go outside of the box and, and younger, newer teachers, novice teachers, I should say, they may have a fear of, of doing something like that because they don't want to feel like, you know, they're breaking some kind of, you know, rule, whether it's unwritten or what, what not. But did you did you get that feeling or did you just say, you know what, I'm just going to roll with this? Yeah, I mean, there, there was definitely a lot of pressure, you know, you, you, the first time in my um, professional career, you know, having an opportunity to teach at Long Branch and you're always afraid of running afoul of the rules and what have you. Um, mm -hmm. And it did get me in trouble over the years. I'm not even going to lie. Um, <laughs> there were students that were, that were supposed to be in other classes that wound up with me. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you have to establish boundaries. But I, like I said, I just I thought that there was more value in them feeling that they trusted me enough to be there um, than being a stickler for the rules and where somebody was supposed to be. You know, true, true. Because, I, you know, it's, it was good trouble that you right. were getting in, though. You know what I, I mean? Because it, it, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And it, but but also, I've always been, 
I always been someone who thought the the classroom is an important space, but in the margins, in the margins is where the real relationships are built, right? So in those spaces that are not centered with this is teaching and learning, but in those spaces that are transitional, in those spaces that are, you know, um, I'm seeing you in the community, or this is my, my lunch time, but let's spend some time talking. You know what I mean? Like, to me, that that's where the magic is built. And that's when you talk about love, mm -hmm. I feel like that's what a love, you know, what what a love is built. So I'm, I I applaud you, man, for for having, you know, the 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 willingness to just to say, you know what, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this step, and then I'm gonna see what happens because I was the same way, you know, I was the same way, and I and I think what I was able to see a lot in you was a lot of the things that 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 I would dare to do, you know, um, in building community. And, and a huge shout out because so many, you know, so many students, man, they, they talk so highly of you. And, and when they, the, the thing that they always say is that they talk about discussions. You know, they talk about be having spaces to talk about some deep, deep things. Um, and, and I remember stopping into the class sometimes and just hearing some of the dialogue, you know, that, that, that was going back and forth. Can, can you tell us, you know, about any type of situations that you had, you know, a, as a teacher where, you know, you felt that, man, am I pushing, am I pushing the envelope too far? You know, and, you know, have you ever had that, that kind of experience in the classroom and in, in, in teaching, you know, community? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and specifically in that in that race gender course, because the, the topics are so heavy, we run the gamut from talking about illegal immigration, you know, and whether that's a value add or detractor for America, um, you know, relationships between race, gender, etc. And people come to those conversations, they come to the table with, you know, their preconceived notions, their bias. So mm. there's bound to be, you know, un unfortunately conflict, you know, there's there's difference of opinion. So, you know, um, like I said, there's there's always fear. There's always that fear in the back of your head that what are the, what are going to be the consequences for me, whether it be from stakeholders in the community, from mm -hmm. the administration, if they were to walk in, am I pushing the envelope too far? Mm -hmm. But you you know sometimes you have to be willing to to take that risk if you feel like it's you know a teachable moment. Thank you, and I agree. Those those teachable moments, you know, they're they're important, and and I think that being able to trailblaze and go into those situations that many of us and many folks don't want to go right. into in terms of discussions, I think that you know it, it's critical. I want to change lanes a little sure. bit. Um, when I was, I think, you know, when when I was leaving the district, you were beginning a family. Um, you know, like if you could just, you know, talk a little bit, you know, about your family. I know your dad now. You know, um, if you could just share a little bit, you know, about you, you know, the family man. Yeah, I think I, I met my wife shortly before that uh, that first year began, um, and got married not too long after 2014. We got married. My son was born 2015. My daughter uh, came 2018, and uh, it it wow. changes you, man. I can remember uh, we had an academy meeting back in the day, and we were talking about the relationship that we need to establish with our with our students, and what the consequences mm -hmm. are when we fail to do so. You know, and you talked about True. how you have a daughter, you're a dad, and you didn't want mm -hmm. one of your students sticking up your daughter. Yes. And that that man, yes. that was impactful, bro. That hit me, and yeah. it sticks with me now. Yeah. Yeah, that that was the lens that I always looked at it. You know, there was there was a time, you know, talking about being a dad. I used to tell my students before I was a husband, before I was a dad, I would tell my students, like, I'm not having kids, man. I can't <laughs> handle kids because, you know, when you work with young people, right. you're like, oh, my God, you know, and you're helping parents deal with, you know, uh, teenagers mm -hmm. growing up and maturing, you know, preteens. And I was like, I don't, I don't I'm not about that life. Right. So I used to always tell my kids that. And when I had my own children, though. Mm -hmm. You know, it just changed the. It, it, I always loved children, right. but I was like, man, I want my kids to to have experiences that are great and that are awesome because kids spend so much time with teachers sure. in educational facilities. So I was like, I want my kids to have the best experience. So I was like, 
I better make sure that I am providing the best experience for other people's children. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I always, you know, you, you're right. I used, I, I still use that to today because I believe that's how the universe works. You know, I believe that, you know, what, what we put out into the universe is, is what we get back. Sure. Um, and, and if I'm, if I'm developing these relationships with these young people, there's a good chance that they're going to brush shoulders with people who I love. And on the strength of that, they're going to have good connections with them regardless to whom what mm-hmm. so i i am you know it, it's funny that you remember that because i also I, I remember telling you know telling those stories um and, and use and using that so you're a dad of two man yeah. i so they're what are three years apart they are yeah my son is uh just turned five my daughter's two so that's about yeah yeah, so you running around right now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So just you listen, I appreciate you just for this time because I know I listen, I know how serious it is. You know, uh shout out to your wife because she's probably holding it down she right is, now. Yeah, but I know <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know at that at those ages, man, you know, how, how crazy it could get in the house, especially around this mm-hmm. time and you know, and getting in the bed. You know, ha- has that, you know, speaking of that, in terms of finding balance. Mm-hmm. And, you know, putting the work in that you put in, that we put in as educators, as teachers, specifically as teachers, I mean, you teachers put in a lot of work. You know, how are you finding that in terms of balancing? You know, you know, are you, do you feel balanced? Do you feel, you know, pulled more in one direction over another? Do you feel guilty about time with the family versus, you know, time with, with uh, in the school and things like that, preparing for school? Sure, I mean, you know, on any given day it can go, Go either way, you know, but the important thing is to to just make sure that if you're going to offer yourself to your students, then you got to take care of yourself as well. You know, so establish mm. um, boundaries, compartmentalize when when necessary um, and, and save something. You know, don't don't exhaust yourself mm. in the course of your work day and then you come home and your family's getting least of you. And that's, you know, it's, it's a like struggle. But you got to you got to keep something in the tank. I like that, man. I like that. Save something. Mm-hmm save something it it reminds me of it was a conversation um we have a book club and we were we were read i forget what what brought on the conversation but one of the members had spoke up uh, about a conversation i believe it was between james baldwin and nikki giovanni and this is this is going way back and and one of the things that nikki giovanni was saying is that you know you know black men you you're out in the community and you're putting all of this work in and you're working hard and you're smiling and you know being present when you're outside of the house but then you come home and you're giving us like the business you know and 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 then baldwin like retorts like yeah but like this how i gotta hold it down because if i'm not holding it down out there the consequences can be grave and you know and, and it was like such a complex conversation and you just wrapped it up when you said save something Mm -hmm. you know like that's that i love that man Mm -hmm. like you know that is deep you know like save something you know when you come home there needs to be something left in the tank Mm -hmm. you know for for family that i like that man i I think think that's definitely a gem thank thank you for sharing that one so let me let's go back to you know in terms of motivation to be a teacher Mm -hmm. um did you always know or did you fall into it? How did it happen? Um, I was always drawn to the content, but I'm not going to, you know, sit up here and lie and say that that's what I wanted out the gate when I was in high school. I think, you know, people have this this thought in their mind that when they hear private school, right? Like I went to a private high school that uh, the expectation was that I was going to go to college and that there was guidance and my mm-hmm. life was planned and so on and so forth. But I had, and you know, it is what it is. I had terrible guidance counselors when I was in school back mm. on it they i met with them once a year to decide classes um it was nothing like what i see you know working in long branch so neither of my parents were college graduates you know mm. and it was like you can either go to work you can go to college i guess if you want they didn't really save for college so wow. you know they, and this is not to take anything away from them they work very hard so when i made the decision to go to school um i was a business major and i became you know i was always interested in science biotechnology um, and then they told me I had to wow. take like physics 17. I said, no, nah, I'm good on that. <laughs> <laughs> I was always passionate uh, about English. I love to read. So, you know, it just, it happened organically. Um, when I transferred to TCNJ, I kind of started over on that four year uh, program and English and secondary ed is where I, where I ended up and I've not looked back. 
Wow. So you didn't, you know, I kind of fell into it as well. I, I think, you know, um, and I can't even point to a, I could point to a particular moment, um, but there were a combination of things that, that, that kind of pushed me in that direction. But, you know, I always like to ask that, um, you know, and you, you made it, you made a good point about, and I like to talk about this is sometimes as educators, you know, we can have perceptions about communities of folks mm -hmm. or parents. And you, you, you mentioned parents and oh, I, sorry, my microphone just, my earphones went out for a second, but you had mentioned parents and you said, you know, a lot of assumptions are made because I was at a private, you know, private school that, you know, it, it was like this, this path that was just, you know, carved out perfectly right. for me, you know? And another thing that you mentioned is that, you know, my parents didn't, they weren't like sticklers for, you know, the education thing, you're going to go to college and this thing. So, but that doesn't mean that your parents didn't value right, education. Exactly. That's very true. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. And, and, and I think that, that sometimes, you know, I was talking when you talked about fee, you know, she made a good point because she was talking about, you know, sometimes folks may not be able to make it to back to school mm -hmm. night. But that doesn't mean that we can make an assumption that, see, they don't care about education because they're not at back to school night, you know. Um, so I, I think that that's important for educators, a takeaway for educators. I know it was the same way for my parents. A lot of the time they were just breaking their butts just to make sure they can provide for us. So it was it was like an agreement. It was unwritten, but like an understanding and agreement. You go to school and handle your business so that we can go and handle, you know, what we got to handle. Right. And and that's, you know, and that's what I did, you know. So, you know, I, I think but I think that that's important to understand, you know, as educators is that just because you don't see a parent at back to school night, just because you don't see a parent at conferences, we can't automatically make an assumption that there's a devalue, you know, um, in, in education. Yeah, and I think there are there are parallels between your experience and mine, like. I think the expectation was the same with my parents, although they didn't go to college. Like you said, it didn't mean that they didn't mm -hmm. value education. My mom, when we were kids, she read to us every night, made sure that we had that, yeah. that foundation. And although we went to the after school program, you know, all eight of those years that I was in elementary and middle school, um, we did homework there. But if it wasn't completed by the time we left, that's the first thing we did when we got home. Thank you God. know, my dad worked yes. seven days a week, but he took the time out to make sure that he sat down with us and, and got those things taken care of. Yeah, see, and, and that that's what it's that's what it's all about, you know, um, because the way that it's communicated is always going to be different, you know, but 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 the, but going back to that part of saving something, you know, and having something left, you know, I think that 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 speaks to that as well. And, and parents being able to, to provide that, you know, for, for their children and then building those relationships with those parents. So. One of the things that I like to talk about, man, and I remember I can recall some of our conversations. We talked a lot about music. Uh, you know, we talked about musical influences. If I'm, if I recall correctly, I think you were big roots. Like I, I may be, I may be mis misremembering, no, no, but uh, yeah, I, I remember you know having those conversations, man. Let, let's talk a little bit, you know, about inspiration, music that's inspired you, art that's inspired you. You know, some some things that kind of keep you going. Um, hip hop in general. I mean, I think it's a it's a beautiful art form in the way that it is a reflection of of lived experience. Um, and then even if you look at it and study it from an academic perspective, you know, people that might not necessarily have such formal education, you know, and, and would you know be held in high regard in terms of education from society's perspective, create these beautiful mm. bodies of work that are incredible to just dissect. Um, whether it's your Jay Z's, Talib Kweli on the conscious side. Mm. Most deaf, you know, it runs my my taste runs the gamut in the hip hop. True. Way, so, so if you had to say your top five, Oof, my top five conversations. In, in, oh, <laughs> man. Listen, man, because like I think people need this is something I was like, man, I got to start fitting in top five into the conversations, okay. you know, because you know a lot of a lot of my guests are hip hop heads, mm -hmm. um, and you know, I'm always interested, you know, but you just you just ran off. You just said Jay-Z, Talib Kweli, most deaf. So I'm like, all right, it sounds like the brother got a top five. And I don't know if it's if it's in any particular order. But, you know, 
if you could give us a few, you gave us those three, but if there's any, anybody else out there that you're like, yo, I'm really feeling. Yeah, if I had to throw people uh, into that same category, top five, definitely those three for sure. Um, maybe not necessarily lyrically, uh, but Kanye West, just in terms of bodies of work mm. and you know what he communicates in his music, mm. at least the first five albums, I'll say. You know, the more mm. recent things, maybe not so much, but those, the first five albums were very uh, impactful. So Kanye, Talib, Jay Z, uh, Most Def, Lupe Fiasco. Yo, Lupe is dope. Lupe, he to me he falls, he for some reason he falls off the radar. Yeah, for a lot of people. You know, yes, mm -hmm. yes. I mean, for a minute everyone was paying attention, yeah. um, but I don't think we appreciate that brother. No, nah, not enough. Not nearly <laughs> enough. Yeah. Yeah, lyrically, I don't think we, I, I don't, I don't think we appreciate him, you know, like we should, you know. I, I'm, I'm with you on that, um, and I'm with you on the Kanye thing, man. Like, you know, we, you know, we always talk about old Kanye. I want the old mm -hmm. Kanye, and you know, and it's part of, it's part of growing, and, and you know, we all grow differently and we mature differently. Our paths change, but um, you said the whole volume and everything that he brings to the table, and I think that you know, musically genius obviously sure. you know um genius man but what, what i love about quietly uh, not quietly but um kanye also is his story in terms of and i think it's on the it may be on a college dropout you know i think it's the last track on college dropout it's like maybe a 12 minute track and he's just kind of going through his process of or progress and how he made it and the, the chance and the risk that he had to take you know packing up leaving Chicago, mm -hmm. heading to, to Newark, New Jersey, you know, meeting this person, meeting that person. Because I was like, yo, that, you know, a lot of times we, as consumers of art, we see the end product mm -hmm. and we don't get a chance to see that that action in the back and, and you know, how folks got to be, you know, who they are and that work that had to go in, you know, and, and, and that, that, that's the stuff that excites me, you know, about artists. When I can hear that, that kind of backstory and, you know, and, and how there was failure and, and, you know, that, that inspires me, man. You know, that, that really inspires me. W would you say that you have had that experience where you were like, you know, man, chips are down, you know, failure and I got to bounce back. You know, were there any times, you could have been in college, you could have been in high school, sure. that you felt like your back was against the wall and it was like, yo, this is a defining moment. You may not realize it then, but you look back and like, yo, that was a defining moment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, transferring to TCNJ, a school that was rigorous in terms of, you know, the, the curriculum and the academics and the expectations. Um, you know, it was, it, was, it was a tough transition for me initially. Uh, I took a course called Women, Culture and Society. And I'll never forget, there mm. were two major assignments that were kind of defining moments for your grade in that course. So we get to the end of the semester, it's the last major project, right? And I did a presentation uh -huh. on the Green Revolution in India, and I killed it. I mean, I showed up in, uh -huh. in a blazer, <laughs> fresh cut, spoke for about you know, 30, 45 minutes, something like that, and I nailed it. Like, I knew I got an A on this. Comes report uh -huh. card time, I got a D in the course. And I'm like, oh, uh -huh. hold up. So I go to the professor's office, boom, 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 what's going on? Take a look at your syllabus. And I'm like, okay. Wow. I look. There was a paper that was supposed to correspond with the uh, with the presentation, wow. and somehow, in my planning, putting oh. that whole thing together, I forgot. So it was just wow. that was a moment for me where I failed utterly, and you know that was that was my first and only D in college. So, you know, wow. Yeah. Just so many, just so many lessons yeah, in that. Absolutely. You know, pay attention to the so details. Many Yes. Yeah, pay to the detail. Be present. Yes. Um, yes. And the other thing I think that was the yes. most valuable in that was I said to her, "Listen, is it? Can I still turn in this paper? I have no problem. I'll get it to you by tomorrow." Mm. She said, "Absolutely not." So wow. I think there was a lesson in that, you know, holding yes. me accountable. Yes. Yes. That that man, and it was like it was it was kind of, and this is what happens with me sometimes. We know where we can shine. Yeah. And, you know, and maybe the presentation piece was something that you felt, yo, I'm a killer. Mm -hmm. Like, I can, I can rock this, you know. And you, we get so caught up in our sweet spot that we lose focus of those, like you said, those small details, mm -hmm. you know, um, that are very, very important. 
you know, in terms of bringing it and completing something. And I think that, yo, those lessons, I know they were tough. But I, I think you, I think she was right, man. I, I mean, it's 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 easy to say now because we sit here, you know. But you know, I think sometimes these lessons they have to be. It has to be tough love, you know. It it, it does, and and I can I've definitely had similar situations in college, you know, where professors was like, nah, dude, nah, you know, you you can't. And and then a lot of times it was like, I remember one professor, he was like, you know what though. I know what your capabilities are. Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely not letting you off the hook right. because I've seen your best work, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and you, you definitely need, you need to feel this pain right yeah. now, you know, and it, and it definitely, it definitely did. It definitely did change me, man. That, that, that's a, that's a, that's a good story. How about books, man? Like what, what y'all got? I was, I was talking to one of my former students um, who I had, who was actually in the race and gender class. And at the time, you know, we were reading back then, um, their eyes were watching God. Like I had, I had brought that in, uh, Zora Neale Hurston. And, you know, she's down right now, this student, um, shout out to Danny. She's down in Louisiana. She was originally from Louisiana, but she's down there now. And, you know, with the, the, the tropical storm, the hurricane that, that just landed a couple of days ago, um, she was posting up on Facebook about, you know, the conditions and how she was looking out the window and, you know, uh, uh, seeing the, the, the storm come in. So I hit her back and I was like, yo, you sound like Janie and their eyes were watching God. You know what I mean? And she she responded, you know, and she was like, oh, my God, that was my favorite book. I love reading that book. You know, thank you for introducing us to Zora Neale Hurston. You know, is there anything that that you guys got on the on the syllabus right now? Some things that y'all y'all reading that that you feel like is, is really game changing? I think a book that definitely had an impact in terms of last year, which we read Push. That one is still on the show. Oh, yeah, we, that's still yeah, there? That's still there. Bro. I mean, you talk about Bro. not being familiar with people's circumstances and eye-opening experiences. It was incredible. Yo. Yeah. Yo. Yo. Yeah, a lot of the students. Push is still, still there. Go it's ahead, still, man. Still Go and listen. <laughs> Yo. Yo, man. That. Yo, shout out to Sapphire. Mm -hmm. uh, push. Oh my God! And, and you know there has since been a film. Right. Um, Which we watch also. You watched the. Oh my God, bro! That that book. I mean, I wasn't introduced to Push until uh, I was in college. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, um, when I had American Lit course in modern American Lit, I think it was called a contemporary. But um, the uh, professor put that out, and I just remember, you know, I was like, "Oh, Push! Let me go get this book." Mm -hmm. um, and the book was so provocative like even the the cover i don't still i don't know if it's still that red with that black you know push mm -hmm. is it still that yeah i was like yo that thing just caught my eye it was one of those books that when you see someone with it it's like oh that that's yo what's that right. about you know um so introduce it to me in college man and i'm reading this and i'm like yo i couldn't put it down mm -hmm. you know i i could i couldn't put it down and I remember two years later, I graduate, get to Long Branch, teach for three years. The race and gender starts. And I was like, man, I want to get push on there, you know. <laughs> and listen, shout out again to, to LB because it's a lot of schools that ain't having not that, you know, <laughs> Yo, they ain't touching it. They ain't touching it. And, and I'm gonna, I, would, I want to hear more. I want to hear about the impact that you believe it, it has with you. Um, I just know when I introduced it, Ken, this is no lie, right? I handed that book out. I may have had two classes, maybe 40 kids total who read it. When I tell you kids were knocking on my door who were not in my class, they were not students of mine asking me for the yep, book. Not much has changed. Like, Yo, so that's still yeah, going still on. Like the exact same experience that I, and it's the first Yo. time that I had the pleasure of, of reading it um, and, and sharing wow. that experience with students. So we kind of, although I had seen the film, you know, we worked our way through yeah. the book together. So it was incredible. I mean, I had a lot of them in multiple classes. So I had them in race and I might have had them in English. Any downtime that uh -huh. we had in English, they were reading that book. They They're were talking about that, that book. book. So it's powerful. And I mean, it speaks Yo. to so many different aspects of, you know, um, 
urban life, specifically Harlem mm -hmm. during the late 80s, mm -hmm. you know, so we did a lot of front loading with that, yes. talking about what was happening um, so that they were kind of yes. prepared for what they would experience in the book. And even so, they were still, you know, they were caught up. It was good. Yo, that in, in a Harlem, you know, a Harlem that has since changed right. so much. You know, you start getting into gentrification. Mm -hmm. You start getting into these things like, you know, but that the picture that was painted of that Harlem in Sapphire was closer to, you know, the Harlem that I remember growing sure. up, you know. Um, but so much. You're right. That book is that man. It was like you could have discussion for days, oh, of course. you know. You get you got sexuality, you had sexuality mm -hmm. all in there. You had unfortunately you had abuse mm -hmm. in there, you know, both physical abuse, you know, sexual abuse, but then also that 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 you know those those psychological warfare that was going on, you know, like with, with the mom right. and with with with, the, with uh with precious, like Oh man, that that's one of those, you know, that that definitely is one of those game changers. It that makes me smile that y'all are still, you know, y'all still exploring that 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 text, man. That that that's definitely yeah. shout out to Sapphire and shout out <laughs> shout out to Push. You know, it's funny because there's a book, I don't know if you're familiar with Heavy. Um uh, is it Kate, Kate, Keith, Keith Lane, Lamont? I, I, I may be mispronouncing his name, but the title of the book is Heavy. Okay. Um Bro, you have to check that book Absolutely. out. And the reason why I'm thinking about it is because it's funny because the cover is very similar to Push. Okay. It's like this red cover, but then it's just in black, heavy. Mm -hmm. Like, and when I tell you the brother is bringing it, what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going um, to connect you on Facebook with him when we when we hop off. Um, I think he's a he's a professor down it may be Mississippi, I believe. Um, but that book, when I when you say heavy, it reminds me a lot of of push and Sapphire and Precious's journey, mm -hmm. you know, and this is this is his coming of age book. But this you you would I think you could possibly use it, you know, as, as a text. You know, in in the course, I mean, but I, I think you would enjoy. I appreciate it. That. I definitely think you would enjoy. It. Yes. So, man, we just got on our all, our whole nerd English, uh, like, yo, <laughs> yeah, but yo, 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 yeah, right. They're like, oh man, you know what? But but to but you know what? I always believe because real talk. When I brought that book to the table, there were some folks, English teachers. Mm -hmm because we all have our different styles, we all have our different thoughts of what's in the canon, what should be taught, when it should be taught, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and that was breaking, a sort of like breaking a barrier or a mold. You know, it was stepping outside of the box. So some, you know, some teachers were kind of like, you know, why, where, where does that fit, you know, um, in, in what we do? So I think it's important that we do have these kind of conversations and people hear it because to me, man, literacy, literacy is literacy. Right. You know, if we're getting young people reading and, and talking about what they're reading and engaging in these conversations, you know, we, we, we have to value that, you know, whether they're reading comic books, graphic novels, you know, we, we have to, you know, we, we have to, we, we definitely, to me, we have to ride with that, you know, if we can get young people hooked. Because then when I introduced them to something like that, it was easier now, mm -hmm. you know, to change lanes. Sure. You know what I mean? And say, you know, all right, now we're going we're going to read a little bit about Gatsby. You know, like now we're going to get into you know, uh, uh, you know, another perspective. You know, in, in, but it was easier because they felt like, yo, you know, he kind of met us where we were first, and he gave us something that that we can identify with. So, you know, I, I think that that's important, man. I I, I really, you know, I, I really do, and I think teachers need to te need to get on board more. You know, with with that, you know, it's just my opinion. No, I agree. But I'm gonna I'm hop. Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. It gives you. Some, I'm gonna hop off my soapbox. It gives you cachet with the students, you know, when you you, yes. you read things that uh, reflect their experiences, perhaps, or that challenge their perspectives. So, like you said, when you transition to something that is, you know, has been normalized and is part of the canon, you know, it's it's an easier transition. The other thing is, you know, if you're only reading the canon, what you're subconsciously, unconsciously doing is you're reinforcing what is literature and what's not, mm -hmm. you know? And I think everybody's mm -hmm. perspective is valuable. Everybody's experience is valuable. True, true, true. No doubt, no doubt. So what, what we like to get into, you know, sort of when we're winding down in the show, um, I like to get back 
to if you can go back and give some advice to your younger self. Um, one, one of the, and you may have actually assigned this before. You may have been on the other side being assigned this at, from your teacher. Uh, one of the things I used to have students do was write letters in September to themselves. Mm -hmm. And they would, they would seal the letter. I would take it, put it in my drawer. In June, I redistribute sure. it, you know. And in the letter, it was kind of about, like, you know, what are some of your goals? What are some of the things you want to, you know, accomplish this year? Um, and then give it back to them in June. And many of them will be like, wow, you know, like they, they will reflect. So I like to ask the question on the show. Thinking back, if you if you had to go back, you know, and, and, and Mr. Morrison now, Kim Morrison now and give advice to the high school version of Kim Morrison, <laughs> what, what would that advice be? That's a tough one. I would say uh, maybe slow down you know don't be in such a rush to to be a professional to grow up to feel like you need to find mm. you know your, your focus in life maybe travel more you know because you always mm. benefit from broadening your horizons having more exposure so travel more and then slow down enjoy it you know I like that, man. I like that. Brother. I'm saying that like I I'm like so that. old, like I'm 80, right? Like I'm only <laughs> you, 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 but that's, you know, it's, but you know, it, it's real though. That, that slow down piece mm -hmm. is, is real, you know? And I think that whether, you know, we're, we're so motivated to feel like we have to be in a certain space and we have to achieve certain things, right. um, you know, at certain times, um that that's real to me that that really that really hits home and i think that sometimes you know when, when i work with young people i always explain to them that yo you know life don't get caught up in life being this linear like you got to go from point a to point right. b i said because when you think of your life that way you're going to experience real life and you're going to realize that sometimes life is a circle and you're going to you're going to have failures that you've had 10 years ago. You're going to re-experience them, but you got to keep going, you know, and you're going to see some people who are going to achieve like maybe where there's college at a certain time. And maybe you don't you don't reach college, you know, a, a, after four years. But that doesn't mean that you're a failure. So, you know, that that's you know, that's a big that's a big and I've always lived my life that way. Um, so I don't, I think that slow down piece, you know, cause when I hear it, I think of that, man, I think of like, you know, enjoy the process of Absolutely. living, you know, um, and, and not getting caught up in, you know, what's the destination or, you know, what am I going to achieve? And, you know, those things are important, but if, if you're not enjoying, and, and that's something I always have to remind myself of, you know, so I, I like that slow down and, you know, it doesn't make you sound old, <laughs> not, not to me. You know, it makes you sound wise, brother. It makes, you, it makes you sound, yeah, you know, it, it makes you sound wise, man. You know, any any closing remarks, um, anything you that you would like to share, you know, for the folks who, who tune in to Purpose and Practice? Um, I think just to reiterate some of the things that we talked about, like as a novice teacher, if you're involved in education, if you're a member of a community, don't be afraid to engage in, in conversations that might be difficult. Don't be afraid to take risks. You know, as long as you, you have a purpose that's clear and you operate from a space of love, then there's, there's value there. So. I love that. I love that. Mr. Morrison, you know, I, we definitely consider you family to the show. Uh, family to the podcast, um, you know, hopefully you are someone you do not mind if folks reach out to no, you. Um, I know that, you know, you definitely have a presence on social media, um, definitely on Facebook. And, and I know there's also, is it on the fence? The, um, is that, is that the Facebook? It group? is. Yes. Yes. Um, but, you know, and folks can can, can link up uh, with Mr. Morrison and, and, you know, learn more about the things the discussions and the dialogue that's going on and, you know, some critical conversations that are going on. And we, you know, like I said, man, you're you're definitely family to the show. And I appreciate you taking this time to come on to the show, you know, and, you know, and uh, sacrifice some family time in order to do that. We got someone saying that they love that they love that advice um, out, in, out in the chat. So. Definitely shout out to you, Mr. Morrison. It's been real. Um, it was good talking English, <laughs> talking some literature, talk like, some you know, yeah, we talked hip hop, we talked fatherhood. 
Um, you know, we taught challenges, you know, we taught parent parenting, sacrifice. It was a lot, man. It, it was a lot, you know. So and, and I really I really appreciate you giving us this time on this Friday night uh, to, to do those things. So with that being said, folks who joined us tonight, much love. Those of you who are going to catch us later on the replay, whether it's on YouTube or whether it's on Facebook or whether it's on soon to be Anchor. About to drop it on Anchor, so you'll be able to get it. Yeah, you'll be able to get it on Spotify. You'll be able to get it on iTunes. You'll be able to get it on, you know, any type of podcast platform that you that you are uh, that you're using. So thank you. We love you. Purpose and practice. We are out. Dr. Rawls Dill, Mr. Morrison, saying peace.